Okay, I'm going to start the video with a little bit of housekeeping, because I keep neglecting to talk about this in other videos. We have a Patreon, which you should maybe check out if you're interested. We have some cool, updated content on it that you can get as rewards, which includes a Patreon-only Discord voice chat and text chat on our Discord channel. We will be doing special live streams where you can draw with us or play um, you know, our games with us, like Drawful. We'll also be doing a critique stream of your submitted art if you join that tier on Patreon. So go check it out. There's a link in the description down below. And we really appreciate it if you decide to support us, because that's really sweet. Um, and hopefully you you all are interested in, in the stuff I just mentioned. Um, so yeah, go check it out. Okay, on to the video. So, uwu, I am doing something new <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll stop. So yeah, doing something new. Finally, not just redoing my thumbnails. Still thumbnail work, because I think it's really important for me to get this prep work done and get it done right, <laughs> even though it'll take a long time. Bones and I were talking about this today. We were like, oh my god. All this prep work is taking so long and like we are not seeing the fruits of our labor for a very long time but as soon as we have all this like detailed prep work done like the thumbnails and the compositions and the style choices once we have all that done the comic pages will fly by so fast so yeah once i actually start penciling and coloring these pages hopefully they will go by real really quick but yeah, this prep work is just taking forever because we want it to be done right. I was going to say perfect, but like perfect is unachievable. So <laughs> I just want them to be real, real good and be the best of my ability. So I finished off my second round of thumbnails uh, earlier this week and I gave them to Bones and he looked through them and most of them are done. He approved, I'd say like 80% of them. And he was saying, like, yeah, for, for most of them, like, looking through, he had the script open, but he was, like, looking through, I could look at a page and tell what the story was, even at such, like, a low-res level. And I was like, yes, that's awesome! And there are a few pages that I'm really proud of, um, and I'm really excited to, like, flesh them out and get them ready, because they get me all excited when I'm looking at them in thumbnail form, which is great. It's a great feeling. <laughs> so, I'm gonna take those and work on them but there were some pages where he's like this looks kind of rushed i can't tell what's going on a lot of these panels look the same um that's definitely a problem i've noticed in some of my pages especially when i like i went through it and i maybe didn't think about it too hard and i was kind of lazy with it i'll have the same panels that are like all the same size and the they're all at the same, like, camera angle, and they all just look the same. They all carry the same weight on the page, so you can't tell which one is more important, or the action isn't being, like, portrayed in the best way, and it just looks really boring and flat. Uh, so there's a few pages here and there that I need to go through and fix up, um, but for the most part, they're done, which means I can start on some of the color choice, and I can just start moving forward and I'm really excited. Um, I definitely have to go through and fix up a few of them though. So that's what I'll do next. Um, but today there is a section in uh, these thumbnails that is, it's an explanation of some of the magic in, in Nine Point um, where one of the characters is talking about it and uh, so we do like uh, just a representation of like what she's talking about instead of just showing her talking the whole time. Kind of like if she opened like a manual or something and she's showing them like the manual of what she's talking about. That's the basic idea. Um, so I did all those pages and Bones keeps looking at them and he's like, I can't really tell what's going on. Like I kind of can tell, but there's something not right. Uh, so I was like, okay, how about I take these and I will make them a little more fleshed out so you can get an idea of what I'm thinking about. Because I didn't do any very like detailed versions of this when I was doing my other prep work, like the design side, not the thumbnail side of these. So that's what I'm doing today, is I'm going through doing a more fleshed out mock-up of what I want this to look like so that I can show it to Bones and be like, now picture this with all the other pages. And he'll be like, okay, cool. 
And if I really need to, I might take some of the other pages from this section and do like a more fleshed out version like this. Um, just in case, you know, Bones is like, I still don't get it. There's still something wrong. Uh, and I think it was really helpful for me as well to do this because um, I was also having a little trouble picturing exactly what I was thinking about because I was like, I kind of wanted to feel like those old medieval manuscripts that are all illustrated and um, they have all like the fancy stuff in the margins, um, but it's also like a cute little manual or something that a student might have. So one thing I changed was in my thumbnail sketch, I had the character who's speaking over top of it. I had her dialogue in um, round speech bubbles as if she's speaking, which makes sense on a narrative level because it is her speaking over it. It's not like um, words written in the text. However, it was just clashing with everything else that was going on in the page. So I just changed her speech bubbles into little decorated caption boxes because it just integrates better with the design and I think it's still implied enough that she is speaking, um, especially because going into the scene, she has speech bubbles, we transition to the manual, and then when we leave, it's her speaking again. So I think there's going to be enough context clues that people will know it's her talking still. Yeah, so I did a whole bunch of cute little embellishes on the margins and the gutters between the panels. I added a bunch of little flourishes on the caption boxes. Um, and I think when I do the final version, they'll probably be more detailed than this. Um, this is just really quick, uh, just to get an idea of what I wanted to do. Um, and I think it's really important when I'm going into something where I don't exactly know what I want to just put something down so that I can build on top of it later. Um, because I can't sit there and imagine these pages super well, um, just because I don't have too much points of reference and I haven't really done something like this before. So it really helps to just get something down, even if it's just like little triangles or little geometric shapes and squiggles, um, so that as I go on, I can make it detailed and add more, I guess, like substance to it later. And I also wanted to play around in color, uh, just so that I get a better idea of how everything looks together. I don't think these are the final colors. I might do more something more detailed with more colors. Um, and I also want to make sure that the colors fit the tone really well. Uh, but I just grabbed whatever kind of felt right for now. And I will change it later, very likely. But yeah, I'm happy with it so far. I'm hoping Bones likes it too. He hasn't looked at it quite yet. Because it's very new and I'm sure that we'll do a few rounds of feedback on this before we have something finalized. Because um, who knows, this might not match up with what he was picturing for this scene. Um, I'm just taking a stab at it. <laughs> Get it? Because there's, there's knives. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just, I'm trying my hand at it. And then we'll go from there. And it's really nice to just have something on paper that we can talk about instead of talking about like pie in the sky ideas that could be anything. And then, hopefully next, I will look at the other pages and choose some color palettes. Um, I was thinking about doing that today, but this ended up taking a little bit more time than I thought it would. Which is great, because I think I'm pretty happy with, like, the level of detail I put in for the amount of time that I put into it. Um, I was I was a little worried sitting down that this would take quite a long time, especially because it's so new. But it turned out pretty dang good. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. And I will have to talk to Bones to see if it is what we're sticking with. Uh, so we'll see. Who knows? I might add more detail to the characters on it. Right now I'm kind of going for, like, a sketched ink look with, like, cross-hatching and stuff as if someone has done, like, a little illustration in a manual. Um, though I wonder if that will clash with the, the frames of the panels because they're all ornate and colorful. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel later. So yeah, so that is where I'm at on the comic front. It's very nice and exhilarating. It's just nice to be onto something new that isn't just plugging away at the at, at the thumbnails, at the same stage of thumbnails for a very long time. Um, and the reason it just took so long was just I've been busy with other work and making sure that I'm staying on top of my magpie pages because those are being posted. And which, by the way, if you want to read, we have links in our description to the magpie, which is my other horror comic. But yeah, just keeping up with those updates 
has been taking up quite a bit of time. And on top of that, Bones and I have just been busy with, with some other things. It's been a little bit of a, a crazy month um, with crazy weather and vet appointments, etc. But yeah, it's just nice to, to have something new to talk about. And I also got really excited about comics yesterday. Um, I was feeling a little low down about it. I was like, uh, I don't work on this enough. And I, you know, I, I've been nervous the past few weeks sitting down to do these vlogs because I don't feel like I have anything new to say. Um, and I, I just like to have, you know, an interesting topic that I find personally, like, interesting or stimulating to talk about. Um, and not just <laughs> rattling on about nothing in particular. Um, but I, I've just been feeling like I have I just don't have anything new or interesting to say about my comic process, just because I'm on the same step for so long. But yesterday, I picked up a book that uh, my dad gave to me for Christmas. It's called Framed Ink by... Mark, I'm, I feel like I'm going to butcher his name, I'm very sorry to the author, but uh, Marcus Mato Mestra. I'll, I'll put it in the description so you can, you can look up the book. Um, but it is all about composition for visual storytelling, and it is a really good book. <laughs> I'm really glad my dad got this for me. Uh, it was a very thoughtful gift, um, but it just talks about ways that you can frame things and set up your compositions in your comic. It also talks about film um, because the author worked for DreamWorks and Sony Animation, um, but the same logic applies to graphic novels and he says so in the book. But yeah, it's just a lot of it is stuff that I have already learned from working in comics and from and just things I've learned from other people in the space, but it was very, it was kind of like reaffirming and being like, okay, I'm doing a lot of the right stuff and thinking about it in the right way where, um, you know, just matching the mood to the way you set up your objects on the page, <laughs> like just things like that. And like following lines of motion and making sure your, your contrast is there and that, like how to, there's just so many concepts in it that are so good. So I did learn some new things and a lot of it was stuff that I'd already already been thinking about that was like a nice refresher and just felt very reaffirming like okay, I'm on the right track. I'm doing the right things and I can I can improve on these. This is great. So it got me really reinvigorated to work on art. And yeah, and like I said, it it, it introduced some things that like I've seen and I think I've took in but it didn't I didn't have the words to put it together. Or, like, now that it's been pointed out, I see it everywhere, and it's like, oh, that's awesome. Um, like, one concept, for example, is he talks about suggesting motion in a panel where, say you have, like, a chase scene. You have someone who's leapt across, like, um, a space between buildings to grab onto, like, the balcony on the other building. And the way you can suggest that motion is you can have the person who's jumped, who's like hanging off the other building, you can have the person chasing them getting ready to jump after them, like in that moment right before they jump. And you can suggest like the first motion without having to show either of them jumping. <laughs> like you'd have to see it, but it's like, oh, that's so cool. You can suggest motion without actually showing motion because comics is all still frames. But yeah, it's just so cool. There's so much good stuff. And it's also reminded me that um, I need to do a lot more work with my lighting in my comics um, because in film, lighting is super important. It sets the tone. For example, like a horror movie versus like a rom-com, you know, the horror movie is going to have really dark lighting where you can't see anything. And whereas like a rom-com will have very like soft lighting where everything's very well lit and nice and pretty. And... I realized looking at my work that a lot of my stuff is very just washed with the same kind of light all the time. Um, every once in a while I'll have like a nice panel where compositionally the lighting is very dramatic. But for the most part I don't really hide much of my work in shadows and I should probably do that, especially in Magpie, which is a horror comic. <laughs> but yeah, I just need to think more about lighting and how it affects characters and scenery. It just 
reading this book has me very excited about making stuff. Um, and it's got my imagination spinning with really cool compositions I can work on. And it just fits really well with what I was struggling with in the thumbnails with my boring compositions. So it's like, yes, I know how to make them cool now. Yay! It's really cool! I'm really excited! Um, so after reading a bunch of this book, I'm about halfway through right now, I sat down last night and I did a bunch of magpie pages that I've been putting off, and I finished like a whole bunch of nine point stuff, and a bunch of work that I had sitting around, and I just felt really reinvigorated to work on my stuff. So yeah, go read that book. It'll get you really excited about comics, and I think it says, like, everything I've ever wanted to say about composition, and it's nice because I feel like I finally have the words for everything. It's great. Go read Framed Ink. It's such a good book. Okay. So that has been me this week. I'm excited about comics. I'm excited about making comics. I'm excited I'm making progress. Life is good. <laughs> and I think that's all I have today. Thank you so much for listening. Like I said at the beginning of the video, go check out our Patreon. We finally got it all up and running. I'm excited to start a lot of this new content once more people sign up. And yeah, thank you if you already support us or if you decide to support us. It really means a lot to us. And it means that we can start doing even more cool stuff that hopefully you guys want to see. So go check it out. Go join the Discord server if you just want to talk to us. It's also in the description down below. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!